From Joe Rogan's future with the UFC in jeopardy to fans demanding that Dana White step down, the drama level in the UFC has clearly reached an all-time high. With each passing day, the promotion is starting to look more and more like a soap opera, with constantly evolving storylines. Rogan has become a permanent fixture of the UFC and along with Dana White, is essentially synonymous with the UFC. But did you know that neither Rogan nor White was present when the company was conceived? Yeah, true story. Despite this, today, Rogan and White cast a huge shadow over the UFC. For many fight fans, it's impossible to even think about the UFC without Rogan and White entering their minds as well. If one or both of them were to leave the promotion, it would certainly mark the end of an era for the UFC. White once said that even though his retirement is still far away, he sees the light at the end of the tunnel. But here's the thing, White's recent personal controversies, yeah, I'm talking about Slapgate, might send White packing, and you might see him at a Costco near you, filling out an application. What is it with guys like Will Smith and Dana White thinking they can just up and slap people? I mean, seriously, do better, y'all. And yes, I know Dana's wife, Anna White, did slap him first. But millions of fans, including myself, and even fighters like Dustin the Diamond Poirier, do not agree with White's decision to respond to his wife slapping him with his own brand of violence. I'm talking to all the men out there when I say, we need to do better and be better than that, guys. Did you know that if Dana is fired from his UFC presidency, Joe Rogan will probably be the first person to follow him out the door? No joke. While hanging out with Will Harris for an episode of the JRE podcast, Rogan revealed the details of a particular clause in his contract. Rogan said, I have it in my contract that when he leaves, I leave. He brought me in. I'm like, I don't want to work for anybody else. It's so easy working for him. He's so wild and so crazy. Something tells me Anna White knows all about the wild and crazy better than anyone. Anyway, I digress. Clearly, Joe Rogan loves working for Dana White and really respects him. Or maybe Joe's simply in love with the paychecks he gets from Dana. More on that in a little bit. Some argue that Dana White and Joe Rogan leaving the UFC at the same time will deal a huge blow to the company and MMA as a whole. However, I don't buy it. After the release of the video of him slapping his wife, White was absolutely vilified on social media. A number of news outlets are calling for the UFC president to be fired, and a ton of fans are leading the charge as well. The backlash has become so intense that even White's latest business venture, ironically called Power Slap, has also been delayed. And get this, the proposed rules for White's new Power Slap League are simple. Contestants slap each other in the face in order to win the Power Slap League tournament. Immediately after the video of Dana slapping his wife on New Year's Eve surfaced, White issued a video apology addressing the incident. He offered no excuses and took full responsibility. After getting caught power slapping his wife on video, what else could he do, right? But you know what I think is the best way for Dana to redeem himself? I want to see a boxing match or MMA match between Dana and the problem child. Let's see how effective Dana's power slaps are against Jake. Sadly, several fighters and people in the MMA world have come to Dana's defense, including the UFC and its partners. When the slap video went viral, they all went into damage control mode and did everything they could to save White's reputation. A daunting task. Even ESPN went so far as discouraging its employees from covering the incident. Man, that is not gonna age well. Not surprisingly, this caused a media firestorm and many observers criticized the questionable business practices and tactics used during the scandal. The initial shock and outrage of White's Slapgate video have definitely died down, and it appears that White's position as the face of the UFC's corporate structure is secure. For now, his public image has certainly been tarnished, but it doesn't look like his future with the UFC is in jeopardy. With that said, none of us are privy to what is happening quietly behind the scenes, and so-called unexpected occurrences could indeed alter White's fate. What we are privy to, however, is Joe Rogan's personal financial information. Yes, we wouldn't be any good at our jobs if we couldn't give you all the details. So here's what we know about Joe Rogan's income and net worth. Introducing the challenger, the former UFC lightweight champion of the world, Frankie Edgar! Did you know that Rogan is paid an average sum of $50,000? for each appearance he makes on the UFC's commentary desk. Considering Rogan makes 12 appearances a year, if you do the math, that's 12 times 50,000, a whopping annual salary of $600,000. That's a lot of cake. 
Because Rogan's appearances are chartered for pay-per-view events, he makes a substantial amount for being a key member of the commentary panel, which includes John Unick and Daniel Cormier. Rogan is considered one of the most distinguished figures in mixed martial arts. Although Rogan wasn't a key player in the creation of the UFC, he certainly helped guide the promotion to superstardom. Rogan used his reputation as a stand-up comic to garner attention and hype from his supporters. And to be fair to Joe, he's not only a commentator, but a post-fight interviewer. That was a, a classic Frankie Edgar performance. You fought a very dangerous and a very talented young man. And he's got other important duties as well. Rogan has since leveraged his position of fame and launched his own podcast that's become massively successful. Do you know why Rogan's presence is not required for every fight night that the UFC presents? Anyone? Anyone? Okay then. Due to Joe's high valuation as a special commodity within the UFC, his presence is only used for special attractions. Like the UFC's monthly pay-per-view event, Dana White and the UFC have always delivered a PPV event every month for the past 20 years. When a pay-per-view event is held in another part of the world, say Brazil for instance, Joe's commentary duties are typically handled by a replacement. In fact, Rogan decided a few years back that he had no intentions of dealing with any strenuous travel obligations in order to cover UFC events abroad. Considering the next pay-per-view event, UFC 284, will be held in Perth, Australia, Rogan won't be there, so the next time we see him probably won't be until March at the earliest. For now though, fans can't wait to have the 55-year-old podcaster back at the commentary table. Daniel Cormier and John Anik might be the Sunday, but make no mistake, Rogan is the cherry on top. He definitely makes things more exciting, like the time Frankie Edgar and Tyson Griffin met at UFC 67 for a lightweight showdown. Rogan was there and provided us with hilarious commentary. Rogan famously said, Tyson Griffin has some huge legs. That's some serious squat power. If Tyson was a girl, you would say she has a badonka donk. Where does he come up with this stuff? Joe's comedic expressions during his UFC commentary have also been compiled on the internet, often referred to as Roganisms. These are popular and funny expressions that Joe loves to use when commentating. Of those inside low kicks. <laughs> Things such as the expression, substantial x advantage. For Joe, the words substantial and advantage are really funny. Pretty much any advantage one fighter holds over another quickly becomes substantial for Joe. Even closely contested matches seem to produce someone substantially superior in some categories. You're a funny guy, Joe. Keep doing you. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.